My name is Anya. And my name is Elena, and together with Anya, we are part of the research support unit of the University Medical Center in Groningen, the Netherlands. And our aim uh, for today is to increase awareness uh, of societal impact and the connection between science and society. And we would like to engage into discussions about societal impact with researchers to um, also make them see that a good impact plan can benefit their research. And we have prepared a webinar to present uh, the impact initiatives that are changing the research landscape. And we will tell you more also about uh, our tool, uh, Impact Cycle, that we have prepared to help researchers and research support to prepare research impact plans. And this webinar is part of a series of three events. So there will be two more interactive sessions, one on stakeholder involvement and one on how to write an impact narrative. And uh, these events are supported by the EAMA virtual grant. So we have the opportunity to actually go European wide and therefore, as the Dutch say, welcome, welcome and witam. And benvenuti and uh, welcome. These are about all the languages we know. We are also calling from uh, two different countries at this moment. So we are really happy to share this uh, European level. And uh, now I give the floor to the voice of today, our colleague Anna Salzano. So let's begin and I hope you will enjoy. Thank you, Elena and Anja, and hello to all. Yes, research has an impact on all our lives. The current corona crisis is a very good demonstration of this. Citizens put their faith in research to find solutions to contain the pandemic, to develop vaccines and therapies. It is also becoming increasingly evident how close is the connection between research and society and how important it is to keep research and society in constant communication. In human history, research always spawned from challenges raised by society, from questions that we have as a human race. Research wouldn't exist if it wouldn't want to improve, to get answers, to develop new technologies and cure diseases. So research has impact, it has a purpose, it addresses challenges that we face in our society. It is also funded and supported by this very society. There is a social and economic accountability for science to be transparent and to involve the many partners that have a stake in the outcome of research. In order to bridge the gap between science and society, the research ecosystem has to evolve and undergo a few changes. This has been recognized by the parties that guide and form this ecosystem, such as funders, governments, politicians, publishers and research institutions. In the following few minutes, we will give an overview of the initiatives that are in place to guide research into the new era, to bring science closer to society and to the challenges it faces. In order to achieve this, we need to first have a close look at how research is viewed now, at how it is assessed. Research output is currently assessed mainly through publications, number of citations and the journal impact factor. The impact of research on society is not taken into account. The new proposal is to assess research based on the benefits it has for others, for other researchers, for the public, for the private sector, for practitioners, or for patients. DORA was one of the pioneering initiatives to get this wheel rolling. It was initiated in 2012, and it aims at improving the assessment of research, away from pure numbers and journal impact factors, towards a wider variety of research outputs. Various other initiatives and movements followed. We will give mainly examples from the Netherlands, since we work and live here, but you will for sure see a lot of similar initiatives in your own country. For example, our national research evaluation system, the so-called strategic evaluation protocol, decided to follow the DORA principle and move away from numbers and rating research, very similar to the research evaluation framework in the UK. Instead of numbers, researchers are asked to narrate the impact of research and provide evidence of it. Not evidence in form of journal impact factors, but evidence in form of partnerships, benefits to other research projects, or to society. Researchers are asked to showcase or widen their collaboration and engagement with various parties that are not their usual academic peers, but rather come from the non-academic side, for example, industries, policymakers, government, or citizens. And this is on top of doing research, writing for publications, applying for fundings for their teams. This is a lot to ask, 
And that's why a shift is needed in the ways in which researchers are evaluated and rewarded. With this position paper, the universities in the Netherlands declare the need to allow for more diversity in research careers. The need to build teams with complementary talents that go beyond research. If a researcher invests time into setting up collaborations, for example, with companies to implement her research, then these activities should be also recognized and rewarded. Have a read, it is really worth it. Here in the Netherlands, several institutions have already started to implement the advice contained in this position paper. So all this is happening on a higher level, organized by governments, funders and institutions. But how is the daily life of a researcher changing in terms of impact? These developments will have an effect on the career of researchers and on their funding. As a start, the way a researcher applies for funding will change. Funders want to see more than numbers and journal impact factors. Therefore, researchers have to present themselves in a different light. They need to change their CV when they apply for funding. For our prestigious personal grants here in the Netherlands, for example, they are asked to present their CV in a narrative form so that they can highlight the impact of the research, also beyond publications. They have the space to showcase other results that might be entirely non-academic, for example, work they do with the local community to increase health literacy, or work involving patients early in the research, or collaborations with museums to educate the public. Also, the network of scientists needs to become more diverse. More and more funders, but also institutions, ask for partners and stakeholders outside of academia. They want to see that researchers engage with their end users and involve them in the design of their research projects. For all these reasons, it is actually important to understand the process that connects the scientific community to society. It might sound theoretical or even abstract, but most researchers we talk to actually follow this process unconsciously. Conscious understanding is however needed. You need to understand the machinery if you want to influence it or improve it. So first, let us make sure that we're all on the same page. Let's define impact with the help of our collaboration partner. Nicole Keith. Hello, my name is Nicole Keith. I am a professor in the Institute of Cancer Sciences at Glasgow University, uh, where I am also the Director of Research Impact. So today we're going to talk a little bit about research impact. And first of all, um, we're going to address what is research impact in the context of, of higher education. Well, actually, it's relatively straightforward to say what research impact is about, because it's really just about making sure that the research that is carried out in academia has some positive effect out there in society. And that can be whether it's culture or the economy or the environment, but it's making sure that it has value beyond academia. And that's all it is really. The impact process can be quite abstract and can give rise to misconceptions and anxieties. We would like to address some of them here. Not all research needs to have a direct impact on society. For example, we have the so-called blue sky research, research that is curiosity driven. Take the finding of penicillin, for example. Had Alexander Fleming not been curious about why one of his bacteria didn't grow, we wouldn't have antibiotics now. This is an example of curiosity-driven research that had a clear impact. It can indeed be difficult to measure impact, but you can anticipate it and you can assess it. It is a rather qualitative procedure. This is why impact assessment is done through narratives. The impact procedure is not there to create more work or to put researchers into the spotlight. On the contrary, it is there to show collaborations teamwork, and to encourage clearer goals. And that depends a lot on if and how you use it. And now Nicole will tell us more about that. Let's watch this short video for more information. But very importantly, what impact does is it actually challenges us to think about preferable futures and how we get there. Because if you think about how we do research, often we just do the next obvious thing. We follow a train of thought. Sometimes we need to pause and actually think, 
what's the preferable future and how do we get there? And that's what the impact agenda allows us to do. So now let's get into it. Let's tackle this impact process, understand it and make it ours. In the project design phase, some questions should be answered. Who benefits from this specific research? And who is interested? Who are the stakeholders that make it possible? Who are the end users that will feel the change? This is the link to society that we are looking for. When we talk to researchers, we see that they already involve a lot of the obvious partners. But when we look at this process together and ask these questions, we often discover that interesting stakeholders are missing and could be added. And now Nicole will tell us more about that. Let's watch this short video for more information. So what's actually in it for researchers? Because this is a common question that, that comes up. And I can begin to answer that by telling you, first of all, why I get involved in projects. Now, I get involved in projects because I enjoy really working with good people. People that are at the top of their game, people that know what they're doing, because that increases the quality and the relevance of the research that you get involved with. So I really work, like working with people who have a shared aspiration, so the same aspirations that I have, but different ways of thinking about that problem, different solutions, things that I just couldn't do on my own. And that's an important part of the impact agenda in terms of what's important for researchers is that it opens up opportunities. So in terms of what's in it for researchers, actually, it exposes you to a far richer and more diverse range of problems to research. That's important because sometimes we don't know what the problem is. We always do the same thing, perhaps, and we should think about doing something else. So it opens our minds up to this diverse range of problems that we could be be studying and solving. It actually also gives you a richer and more diverse range of people and communities and organizations to work with. After all, you can't have all the skills to do things yourself. And we always tend to work with the same partners. The impact agenda actually encourages us to go out and find new partners, particularly partners that are not academic, and they can bring a whole range of ideas and skills to play within a project. These are only a few examples of potential partners and stakeholders. And usually, the earlier they are involved, the more effective this collaboration. Co-creation is the buzzword here. Invite, for example, patient organizations during the project design phase, and you will see that a project gets a whole new perspective. Defining and finding the right partners, stakeholders and audience is already part of something that we call the impact cycle. Here it is. It goes from input in research to results or outputs, from the implementation of results, also called outcomes, to result in impact and the connection between society and science. Let's do this step by step. So before the project starts, you look at the setup of your consortium. You agree on a definition of the research problem, roles and tasks are clarified, incentives are given, and resources are allocated. This is usually the time when writing a funding proposal or designing an impact strategy for your group, or when you draw up agreements. With this constellation, you will create certain outputs. Here are a few examples listed. These outputs are within your control. They are planable. And now Nicole will tell us more about that. Let's watch this short video for more information. As researchers in academia, we often focus on papers. But you know what? There's an awful lot more valuable outputs out there as well. It depends where you work. But actually, there can be exhibitions, there can be performances, there can be videos or artifacts. Working impact opens your mind up to a whole range of outputs that we never considered before. And these range of outputs are really important also in communication because they allow us to contact and work with and exchange ideas with a greater range of people. Researchers are usually quite comfortable until this step, but now these results need to be disseminated, not only among academics, but also through non-scholarly channels. When you create a data set, for example, you could publish it, make it available, and hope that the right person finds it. Or you could make sure that the right person finds it, for example, collaborate with an AI specialist so that a pattern can be identified in your data, which will help a practitioner. 
having the right partners and engaging with the right stakeholders, as well as effective communication and dissemination of your result is key here. This is what puts your result into context, helps you to implement them so that your outputs become actual outcomes. This is what makes your article land on the desk of the right policymaker, so that the results of this article can be implemented in guidelines. Or this is the AI analyzed data that shows a pattern for earlier detection of sepsis and therefore results in better treatments. Your outcomes eventually will have impact. If you have thought about this process beforehand, maybe this will even be your intended impact. The improved guidelines could result in an improved care system. Your efforts to communicate your results to the, li to the right audience could lead to increased awareness and therefore reduce the amount of smokers in your area, resulting in improved health. A lot of impact pathways end here, but we would like to go one step further. We would like to close the cycle so that we can make sure that society feeds back into the research, that new research questions can come from society, new collaboration can come into existence, researchers have better career perspective and get more funding because they made the effort to open up the research. And now Nicole will tell us more about that. Let's watch this short video for more information. Because we often view research uh, as a linear activity. We have an idea, we get it funded, we research it, we publish it, and then some impact happens out there and we don't bother about that. But it's not like that at all, not anymore. Actually, one needs to consider the potential for impact right at the start of a project and plan to build impact in from that point. But this is still a fairly linear concept. It's a little bit of feedback in there where we're thinking, oh, what can we do with impact? How might this have impact in the future? Plan a pathway for how that might happen. Still fairly linear. And I think one of the interesting things that has happened recently is that whilst we've always thought about the circular nature of um, how you have feedback loops within research and impact, seeing how the University of Groningen has come up with a, a new way, a reimagining of, of research impact as a cycle, it's really very appealing because this actually really energizes the concept. It taps into this idea of a circular economy, about sustainability, about no wastage. And that's quite a powerful thing to do because often you need things that help people understand why you should do something. And the idea about circularity helps do this. Our journey is ending here. Hopefully it became clearer in this presentation why the research culture is changing and why this is a good thing although demanding and a bit scary. We believe that it will ultimately lead to better thought through projects. And we hope that our impact cycle tool will help you to look back at your research or plan your research project in advance. Hope we see you again for the next two workshops, which will be interactive and therefore have limited space only. Follow us on LinkedIn, then you won't miss the registration link. Our channel name is UMCG Research. Thank you for listening and remember, impact is fun.